let's talk a little bit about context and occasion. Now these are two very related things, and you can use both words just fine in a rhetorical analysis. But they're really worth thinking about because it helps us understand what's happening within a narrative, within a rhetorical situation. So of course, as you know, as we've studied, you have the speaker, the audience, the topic, you have pathos, you have ethos, you have logos. One of the things though that really influences all of that is this idea of context or occasion. So within context, it's the idea that everything, every rhetorical situation is within a certain context. Those contexts can include things like time. What year is it? Because something I say in 2020, as I record this, versus something I might have said in 1820, has a much different context. If I say something in 2020 as a male who is white, who has a lot of privilege and capital, that has a different context than someone else. All of those elements affect the context. And the challenge for the reader within a rhetorical situation is to understand that context fully. Because typically the speaker in that circumstance implicitly knows the context because they're there, they're in that moment, they're delivering that message. But if you read something, for instance, like Martin Luther King's letter from Birmingham jail, you need to understand the context of the time. What was happening in the 60s? What did this look like in the United States? What were race relations like at the time? Why did he have to write a letter from jail? What was going on? So it's your job to understand that context and to look into it. The speaker's job is that they need to supply the context if it's at all different from the current circumstances in which they might be speaking. So they might have to infuse some elements of context. For instance, the occasion. Why are you here? What's the moment that you're doing this for? Why are you giving this letter, this speech, this uh, illustration? What is the occasion that you need to do this? And that all stems from the last word that I'll tack on to this little presentation, which is exigence. And the exigence is a great word that establishes why this rhetorical situation came about. So for instance, if you are writing a letter to someone in power, let's say to a principal, to uh, a different administrator, but let's go with principal. If you're writing a letter to that principal, there's an exigence as to why you started to write that letter. What was the reason? What's the occasion that made you say, I need to write a letter? Maybe, for instance, you've noticed that um, people aren't being treated well in the cafeteria, right? That something's going on that's really bothering you. And so you're bothered. That's the first step, right? You have that emotion of being bothered. And you're like, oh, man, I, I have to do something about this. That is the exigence. It's that moment of being bothered and deciding you have to do something about it. Then the rhetorical situation is the letter writing. But the exigence is really that feeling or that moment of saying, yeah, I need to do something. Sometimes exigence can be uh, prescriptive, right? So it could be me as a teacher saying to you, I need you to write this paper. Well, you then have to say, I would like to pass the class. I need to write a paper. That's all the exigence there might be. But oftentimes in real rhetoric, it's because there's some kind of thing that fuels you to write or to create to make something. And that fueling, that moment, that's the exigence that leads to the occasion that's all set within the context. 